In today's video, I'm sharing a portion of the interview I did with Johnny Robertson. If you missed the first video, I'll link to it in the description below. Really interesting in it, Johnny talks about drag racing in Culberson, North Carolina. In today's video, he talks a little bit about Christmas and Thanksgiving. Also shares some really interesting history about Murphy, about the theaters that were there, about the bull moose pen, which Johnny can actually remember. He can remember seeing it. I've only seen it in pictures. Tells a really funny story about that. And he also talks some about what it's like to be a member of the Eastern Band of the Cherokee Indians. I hope you enjoy this video and be on the lookout for the next portion I share from Johnny. What about um, thinking about holidays? Like, was your when you were a child was you know thinking about Christmas or like I've asked Granny and Pap about Thanksgiving and they said we never celebrated Thanksgiving. We didn't even know what that was. But did you do that or did you like Christmas? Was that a big time of celebration or? Well, Thanksgiving. Back when I was real small, I don't ever remember celebrating it. Then on down the line, you got to where you know you'd buy a turkey or whatever. And uh, one time, see, people didn't eat no turkeys much. I mean, you didn't buy them out of the store. And the only people that I ever knew that even had any turkeys was Jim Raper over our tame ones. And there wasn't no wild turkeys at that time. But now Christmas, that was a little different story. But back then, what you did, you got clothes and shoes and stuff like that. And if you was lucky, you might have got a toy. But everybody was poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Poor didn't know it. Everybody's in the same boat. Right. Did you like thinking about school or church? Was those big like Christmas? Was it celebrated a lot, or you'd have maybe a Christmas party or a play at church or something like that? Well, when I was little, I don't remember really doing anything, especially at church. Now the church that we attended when I was little was not at Culberson. It was a. Uh, Macedonia over on Cook Bridge Road. And uh, they had service one day a week, it's Sunday morning. And the only other time they might have more was, you know, like, uh, well, if you had a funeral or something, you know, mm -hmm. you'd be there. But now if they had a revival, they'd, they'd be more services in a week. But Culberson down there, it stayed shut eight years in a row. People just quit going. Mm -hmm. People in the community couldn't get along. That's just the bottom line. That's mm. all there was to it. Yeah. Mm. But you now that's where we go now. When me and Peggy got married, we moved into the house that I grew up in. And we'd been going to Murphy, but we'd go down there Sunday and Wednesday night, and we decided that we needed to go one place or the other. And it, I mean, it wasn't that we got mad at anybody oh, no. or anything, right. you know, we just said. Yeah. And so we moved down there, and we'd been down there probably. Gosh, I don't know, probably over 15 years now. Mm -hmm. But we'll go to Murphy occasionally when they have some kind of little special something. Mm -hmm. I guess going back to your business there in Murphy, um, you had just a front row seat of all the changes of the Murphy growing and people mm -hmm. moving in from other places. and. Uh, well, some of that crowd that I had trading with me, I mean, they could take you way back like the bull moose pen in Murphy. And I'll tell you a good one on that. <laughs> of course, most of these old boys are dead now, and I won't put no names with it. But uh, unemployment was bad. And everybody, you know, didn't have a job. And a lot of them would hang around up there in town at the bull moose pen. And they'd sit up there. And this one fellow said, asked the guy, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm counting traffic. <laughs> it gets better. Anyway, the fellow took him serious and he said, where do you get that job at? He said, you go up to courthouse and apply for it. Well, he went up there and I reckon they run him from one office to the other and they'd have a big life when they got him out, you know. He went back down there going to whoop that fellow. And uh, the guy that was telling me, he was the one that told him about getting a job. He said, I had to get my knife out on him. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that'd be a pretty good job, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Especially in those days, it wouldn't have been as yeah. like it is today. Yeah. But he, but he got mad, you know, because they played a big joke on him. Yeah. yeah. But I remember when they parked in the center of town in Murphy, mm -hmm. barely. And there uh, wasn't no red light there, just 
roundabout. Yeah. And uh, that fountain up there in front of the museum, it was in the middle of it. But Murphy had three movie theaters at one time. Wow, I didn't know that. Well, you had where the hen is right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the building right above it, or maybe two buildings up. They had the Dicky Theater. And what I can remember about it, I don't know that I was ever in it, but maybe one time, but I can remember all the neon lights and stuff they had outside. And they tell me that out there on the other side of the street where Hitch Gulf Service was, that old man Hen had the, what they call a chick theater. Hmm. And so that was three. Wow. But I think old man Hen told me he had 17 movie theaters at one time. In different areas, and yeah. And he said in the Depression, he lost everything that he had except one movie theater in Cal Calhoun, Georgia. Hmm. Everything hmm. else he lost. And he said the reason he probably made that one or kept it was he's on the board of directors at the bank. Mm -hmm. They didn't foreclose on it. Mm -hmm. But he had uh, a theater in Blairville, had one in Franklin, had one in Andrews, Robbinsville, Murphy, and had the drive in theater at Andrews, and he had the drive in theater at Peachtree. Oh, I hadn't, I did not know that. Yeah, that's seven, I yeah, can remember. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah. I thought it was just the one there, and of course, I didn't, I only knew his daughter. Um, you know, I've met her, Betsy, yeah, but I did not know that. Hmm. Yeah. And see, his, uh, his son, uh, they call him Peppy, uh, back in the 70s, he moved off to, close to Miami, Florida, down there. And they set up a, a driving theater down there. But they said where he really made his money, they turned it into a daytime flea market. And everybody that went in, they charged them 50 cents or something. And then you got paid for setting up. But they done some interviews on him, on either the History or Discovery Channel, had him riding around his golf cart. But he done offshore powerboat racing. Plus, he had a, a car in a 24 hours a day Daytona car race. And his wife was a doctor over here off, off a hanging dog. Oh, wow. Yeah, but he's dead now. Yeah, I, I did not know that. But old man Hen, last time I could remember seeing him was at Walmart. He traded with me. And he was 96 years old. And he told me when he retired how much money he had. He said, I'm going to run out of money. He said, I didn't know I was going to live this long. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a kind of, quite a character. Good old man. Oh, goodness. Oh. That's fascinating, yeah. I can remember the, of course, the one at Peachtree, the drive-in was still operating mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. Yeah. Well, the only one that I, well, I know of two that's operating. Uh, one is over next to Merville, Tennessee, on 321. And it had been closed and somebody opened it back up. And the other one is the Swan down at Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. But now they tell me that piece of paper that they give you sometimes when you go in there, that there's two still operating in the state of Georgia, and that's one of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the other one is at. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. You want to talk a little bit about, uh, you kind of mentioned how you were connected to the tribe, but like you're, I know that because you've got us to sing before at festivals, so you take kind of a big hand in it, or at least the maybe in Cherokee County portion, or? Well, when when I turned 65, now see, Peggy is a first descendant, mm -hmm. and I'm on the roll. And uh, her daddy was in the roll member. And, but uh, we go up to the senior center. They have meals five days a week. And, but what they also do, anything that the tribe does, these little programs or whatever, the, the senior center will administer it. You know, they'll do the paperwork for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got stuff that you have to sign up for occasionally, and they do that for you. And then the uh, community club up there, we, we go to it. And uh, we've, we've got a, uh, a yard sale coming up in April. And what it is, whatever you want to get rid of, you take it up there, and they'll put a price on it. And the money that gets brought in out of it, See, they take trips occasionally, and that money is just thrown in the pot, and they divide it up, and that's your spending money on your trip. Oh, that's nice. So you got rid of your 
stuff that you didn't want. You got a little spending yeah. money. Yeah, and, and they help you facilitate all of it. Yeah. So that's well, nice. they've been to like the Ark and the Creation Museum. Yeah. They went to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. They've been to Branson, Missouri. Uh, but we don't travel real good anymore. We don't really get into that much. But occasionally they go to Dillard House over at, uh, well, it's, it's not really Clayton, Georgia, but it's between Clayton and Franklin. Mm -hmm. You see, they'll do that. And then uh, here a while back, we went to the casino over there in the convention center, and they had a big get together deal. And then uh, Thursday, we went over to the Solly Center in Turkey. They had a, uh, it was a, like elder abuse and child abuse and you know whatever they they done a, about a two hour program on them. they fed us and we come back so but they they do certain things with us and they'll go to Pigeon Forks Tennessee and they'll go to like a Dixie Stampede or Dolly Stampede now mm -hmm. and uh, they'll go to Black Bear Jamboree and they'll go to Hard Rock Cafe and they'll take you down to Hamricks and they'll take you to Tanger and you know it's just yeah. They put you up in the motel over there. That's nice, yeah. But we've got our own place over there. I mean, they don't have to get a room for us, but I mean, we'll meet them wherever they're at and mm -hmm. do whatever. But there's, uh, right now there's about 18,000 members in the Eastern Band. And back during the removal, on the western end of the airport there. That's what they call Welchtown. And uh, John Welch Center up there, that's named for him. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they had an Indian agent there in 1836, 1838 removal of that time period. They said if you could get to the Indian agent before the Army got to you, that he would sign papers that you could stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of this stuff that you read about the removal it's one of the army hadn't just quit. Mm -hmm. so they'd, uh, they ran them up in the summer and then they didn't start to Oklahoma with them until October. And then, I mean, kids being born on the road. Mm. And, uh, Such a horror, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I forget how many thousand it was, but it's it something close to a third of them died. Mm. By the time they got to Oklahoma, I guess it was it wasn't a good sight to see. No, no. The Yankees come in out of the river out there in the Civil War, and the first thing they done was pour their salt out. Mm -hmm. That way you didn't have no way of preserving, preserving your food. Unless you yeah. dried it. Yeah. Talking about preserving food, did you? What about gardening? I'm sure that when you was growing up, everybody had a garden and. Um, maybe raised animals for meat too? Well, no, we didn't have any animals that you butchered. Uh, we had some cattle at one time, and uh, we actually sold milk. We milked them by hand. My mother would get on one side and milk, and I'd milk on the other side. And she could milk three times as much as I <laughs> kind of could milk a cow yeah. much. And a lot of kids wouldn't even know how to start that now. No, no. But anyway, after the cattle business, we did do some gardening stuff. And my daddy tried growing beans to sell at one time. And he took, he even took a load, I think, to a farmer's market in Atlanta, but he took them somewhere. He ended up bringing them back. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. oh no, yeah. So the, the uh, what's, what's the, what's the name for that? That enterprise or something didn't work or yeah. business. Well, they call it the uh, truck farming. I oh, think truck it, farming. I yeah. think that's the name for it. Yeah. Um, well, what about like just for personal use? I guess did they grow stuff just for you to your family to yeah. put up and yeah. I remember my mother coming in of an evening, and she'd go pick the beans, and string them and break them, and can them. Mm -hmm. After work. After she got off. After yeah. work. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturday it was the same thing. But now we didn't work on Sunday. We didn't do no more. You just had to on Sunday. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what about um, thinking about fruit? Did you gather blackberries or raise apples or? We did some blackberries. You know, make blackberry jelly and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember people 
from over on the Georgia side there from Culberson. I remember them coming into Culberson there and selling blackbirds with a gallon. I remember mm -hmm. my grandmother buying them off of them. And, and you're talking about food. I remember cleaning mud turtles. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never did eat a little turtle, but I remember, remember them in the kitchen fixing one one yeah. time when I was little. Yeah. Yeah. But I reckon if it walked or crawled back then you eat it or something. Yeah, right. Um, you had to think about what you where your next meal was coming more than we do today, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. What was some of your favorite meals maybe that your mama cooked? Favorite things or your grandmother or anybody? Well, my grandmother, she fixed the best little old taters that ever was. I reckon the way she fixed them, she'd boil them. And then she'd take her cast iron frying pan and like bacon grease. She finished them off in that. And it had like a, a crust on the outside, and them was the best little taters. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandparents, they burnt wood for years. And I remember my daddy, he'd, what he'd do, he'd go to sawmill, and they'd always have slams. Well, you'd put a piece of pipe down on the floor of that truck bed, and you'd load them slams on it, chain it down. And what you'd do, you'd take a chain off, and you'd go backwards with the truck and hit the brakes, and roll it off, <laughs> save him having to do it by hand. Yeah. And he took and had a, uh, a little old rack made there, and it was like an X, and he'd lay them slabs in it. And he had a bow saw, and it's still down in the basement, probably into something else that's 100 years old. Yeah. But when I was little, I'd get on the lower end and help him, and I'd go out there and help cut wood half a day at a time. And I don't even know whether I was in school or not. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but eventually they took and got kerosene heat. Mm -hmm. When I was little, we had to, we didn't have indoor plumbing either. Had to have an outhouse. You had to have outhouse. Slop jars. In the winter time, it didn't take long to turn back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all, it's funny, there's so many different names. People called them uh, just the outhouse or the little house out back or the Johnny house or something. Mm -hmm. Did y'all call it something or just the bathroom? or? We called it outhouse. Outhouse, yeah. And that's another interesting thing. When we tore the depot down in Culberson, they had two outhouses out there, and each of them had two compartments to it. Men, women, colored, white, colored, and white. And when you went into the waiting room at Culberson, they had a white section and a colored section. And the only remnant of that that I know of in this county right now is the back bathroom out there where Hicks' service station was. That was the colored bathroom. Hmm. But if there's any sign of that any more in the county, I don't know. But no. And I didn't even know that till somebody was telling me. Oh, yeah. We yeah. always just went and used the same one and never thought nothing about it. Right. Didn't make, don't make no sense, does no. it? When you think about two uh, growing up, did you often go like for entertainment? Would you? Did you get to go to any of those theaters, or maybe you went camping, or hunting, or fishing, or was church mostly the entertainment? Well, I could remember my daddy was pretty bad to shoot pool, and he'd go to Murphy on the weekend, and I'd go to the hen theater while he was shooting pool. Well, finally, he quit hanging out in the pool room, and, uh, and we started going to you know, like the drive-in at Blue Ridge, and that was a summer deal, and probably the hand tater was winter. Yeah, like yeah. I can't really remember. Yeah. But that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And the night them, them boys was drag racing down there, and that one got killed. Mm -hmm. We had just caught home and got in the bed, and we heard them wreck. Mm -hmm. My daddy said, well, I thought it was thunder. We went on the bed. The next morning we got up, and uh, they had, slid to the front of Frank Byers' driveway up at the store. Mm. And the old story he started in when he first came to Colson, they knocked the front porch of it off. And Charlie Garland had a two-guard garage out there. The cars went into that garage and knocked his stuff outside and the roof fell in on them. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, that just that high rate of speed. Well, it's probably doing over a hundred yeah. when they wrecked. And, then it, and yeah. uh, one of them was a Jones boy, and the other was a Gibson. Mm -hmm. It was in the wreck, and Jones is one that got killed. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. did did a lot of people go fishing or hunting or things like that to supplement their food? 
Well, my daddy, uh, like in warm weather, he he fished a lot. And I can remember him taking me bird hunting. And I've got a shotgun in there he bought me when I was 12 years old. But I never was much to hunt. Now, I'd fish a little because there wasn't as much work in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hunting's got too much work in it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there wasn't no deer back then. No, the only not deer even you'd when see I was would be child. up at like Forest Creek Refuge. Mm -hmm. And uh, there wasn't no wild hogs. Mm -hmm. You might have seen a few wild turkey out on Teleco or something. But, you know, a lot of that stuff has come back in. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you go up to Will Johnson's farm up there, you want the peach tree, and you might, might see 50 turkeys. Yeah. And the other evening, we went out to go to church, there's nine deer went right up the driveway right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when I was a girl, I remember one time seeing a deer on Hedden Road between Martins Creek and out, you know, highway, Blairsville Highway. And it's after church, we were going to Sunday dinner at my granny's in Ranger, so. Um, it was like we seen a zebra because it was so rare, you know, and now I can't drive to Clay's in Brasstown without seeing deer. It, usually 9, 10, 12, you know, whatever, like you said, but. One thing, if, if, my, if my wife was there, she'd listen to this, she'd, she'd tell you it's the truth, and it is. But anyway, we've been having deer down there in the holler. Every evening when I come in, there'd be deer down there. Well, I had an old Italian army rifle in there and had adjustable rear sight, so I throwed it in the truck. Well, I come up through there one evening, and they was down there, and I pulled on up here, and I got out. I shot seven times for Mr. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and uh, I got to looking at that sight on that rifle, and I reckoned me throwing it around the truck. The way the sight had got knocked around, Every time I shot at him, I shoot over. Oh goodness! I'd have done better if I just pawned it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she laughed at me. Yeah. And, and she don't have to tell it on me every now and then. Yeah.